terrace garden, sir. I want to have a terrace garden. People today talk about terrace garden. Very good. We started talking about terrace garden in 1990s. You know, terrace garden is something very beautiful which anybody can have. The, and the moment you go and tell home that uh, I want to have a terrace garden, there may be somebody who will tell you, it's an old terrace, please don't do it. The last wall of a building is called as a load-bearing wall. So you can always do composting from the wall to about three feet. To about three feet. There's no problem because it can take the load. In the same way, houses will have beams on the top. So including the beams, it is three feet as you find in the picture, as you see in the picture. So it can be three feet from the load-bearing wall and three feet across the beams. If you want to further reduce the weight, you can always set up the units in baskets or in bags called as grow bags. And you can also have uh, casuarina poles or frames on which you can keep the pots or the bags as you find in the pictures. Very simple. If you want to further reduce the weight, you can mix soil along with cocoa peat. You know, coconut husk is taken and sold as bricks. This can be loosened, mixed up with soil and you can use them. How much of soil do you require to grow the plants? Guess how much of soil you want? Theek. You want to grow mint, pudina. How much soil you want to grow mint? Guess. Four inches is enough. You can grow mint. You don't need much soil. How much of soil is used to grow palak? Palak is very famous, no? Palak paneer, palak, uh, palak uh, uh, gobi, you have alu palak, gobi palak, you have so many varieties of palak today. How much of soil is required? Even a gift basket, a gift hamper basket is sufficient to grow palak. And I grow methi in ordinary small plastic containers which come along with the sweets. You, what you require is only a bed of about 3 to 4 inches is enough to grow methi, to grow palak. And you can even grow methi which is a wonderful fenugreek. This can be grown in coconut shells. Shall we start today? Take a coconut shell, put a small hole there because water should not stagnate. Mix soil with uh, manure, put it into it. Take some methi from your kitchen, put it over there. 12 to 15 days, invite me for a methi paratha or a methi puri. Okay? You can enjoy it. And how much of water is required for a plant? Okay, but now I want to visit your home and if I visit your home and I want water, what would you give me water in? A glass? Yes. If I tell you I am your good friend, I have come home, I want to have a bath, what will you give me water in? A bucket? If you want to have a swim, you will show me a swimming pool. So for a person of my height and weight, if one glass of water is enough, how much of water is required for a plant? Plants require soil moisture, not soil water. And who is the greatest scientist in the farm? Guess. Greatest scientist in the farm. Tell me. The saying earthworm. No, no, there is one big scientist, one big professor, you know. Let me introduce this professor. He is Professor Goat. Goat is a most intelligent animal on the farm. Take goat on a walk. Look at what the goat is eating. Whatever the goat eats, leave the goat. Whatever a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties in it. Whatever a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties in it. So please remember that goat is very essential. It can What the goat does not eat has pest repellent property in it. That's the reason the plant is called as Adatoda Vasika. Adatoda is an excellent plant which a goat does not eat. And the name is derived, is derived from Tamil because Aad Thodadadu, goat does not touch. So if you can identify such plants, take them, crush them, mix them with water, allow it to ferment for about 10 to 15 days, decant, remove, dilute, spray. A word of caution to all of you as far as this is concerned. Please see to it that when you are using any of these preparations, you will spray on a small group of plants and test the concentration. Because when I tell you a grab of hand of leaves, you may think his hand was big. So I can take two, three grabs. The concentrations may vary during different seasons. 
So in case you are trying any of these components, you will first spray on a limited number of plants, get conscious about how it works and then you will start starting. Be careful with the seeds you buy because the seeds which you buy from the market usually will be very much colored, very much colored. They may be pink in color or magenta in color or red in color or blue in color. These are all because the seeds are coated with nicotinoids. Now these nicotinoids are neurotoxic substances. These are pesticides. So if you are handling those seeds, be careful that you handle them carefully and wash your hands. But I would appreciate if you look for what our traditional seeds and we call them as higher loom seeds. And these higher loom seeds are the biodiversity of our country and biodiversity is the strength of any country. Genetically modified seeds are coming in the market. Beware about genetically modified seeds. When we have enough amount of biodiversity, we may not require genetically modified seeds. We are planning to, there are proposals to bring in Bt brinjal. Bt brinjal is a genetically modified brinjal, which is an eggplant. For your information, we have 4,460 accessions of brinjal in our National Plant Genetic Resources Institute of India. So when you have so many accessions, we don't need genetically modified seeds for our own place. So good luck to you. You have your manure, you have your pots, you have your compost, you have your seeds. Grow healthy food, have healthy food and be healthy.